Nights in Basin Lake, 1969. I like participating yearly in Basin Lake. It's mainly a fun tournament. You don't have to be a good player to join. They'll always find a few guys even worse, so you'll go home with a sausage, which is the prize. This time I had to share it with Geza Fried, who didn't cut it in two parts, but broke it on his knee, a Hungarian custom. In Hungary the sausages may be suited for this. Here in Beverwijk he had to go to the dry cleaners at once, which however was closed, so he appeared at the fist of dinner in scout pants. In the past one played in the same room as the Grandmasters, which had its pros and cons. Of course you had to be quiet as a mouse, for disturbing those impressive minds would get you thrown out. On the plus side, unsuspecting visitors from Meppel or Maidenblick could take you for a Grandmaster if you looked grave enough and sometimes worriedly paced the floor. Looking about sternly and calling for silence was the next move. Or you could then go stand behind Botwinnik's chair and look at his position. A little shake of the head, a sad smile and you'd return to your seat. People would be affected. Now all that is impossible. The lemons are brotherly seated together and visitors pass through without a glance to the Grandmaster's room because they now know where the party's at. Although there's nothing to be seen, thoughts are invisible by nature. On this lucky circumstance our mutual courtesy exists. If people could really see what they thought of one another it would be hard to remain polite. In Russia, where they stop at nothing, they have experimented by replacing the top of a single Grandmaster skull by clear plastic. He gets a good crowd. In Beverwijk that can't be done. It was suggested but the Animal Welfare Association resisted. Now you look at those heads thinking, I wonder what's going on in there. My friend, if you knew, you'd be sitting there yourself. The gap between a decent player performing at regional level and an international master is the gap between steam and ice. Both are basically water, but in a different state of being. So it is with those two people. They both play chess, so appear to do the same, but each is of another order. It's not a difference of level, they just do not think alike. Between them there's a gap much wider than the one between a decent player and an incompetent. I should know, because I once played Professor Barendrecht all through the night. It was on the Amsterdam to Venice night train, and Barendrecht didn't get his amusement by beating me every time, he would have died of boredom. No, he kept himself entertained by asking me on which square I wanted to be checkmated before every game. Also, he handicapped, him, handicapped himself by playing with one less castle. This way he kept himself awake and he never failed. In such a case one can't say Barendrecht is the better player. That's a comparison when there's nothing to compare. What happened here was a dog presenting its paw and a human handshake. It looks the same, the difference is immeasurable. Why can't women play chess? Of course I will lose to a female champion but that doesn't say much. Put her against the Grand Master and she'll be blown away. Why is this? One can say they don't play so much, but this is part of the problem. You do something with love and a lot when you can do it well. To me the reason seems to be the almost completely abstract nature of chess. Checkers is completely abstract since even all pieces are the same. So there are no female checkers players. Both games demand the ability to imagine something unseen and to draw a conclusion from your imagination. It's painting in the air. At our school we had a math teacher who one day lost his chalk. He created a cube for us, 
just by making the required moves with his hands. His image was so strong all boys carefully moved around it when the class went out. The girls walked straight through.